Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight we're working on Module 3, Lesson 38, the very last lesson in Module 3. And we are working today to work our way toward doing the standard algorithm for two-digit multiplication times two-digit multiplication. So let's take a look at a couple of problems from tonight's homework. I want to do one of the problems where we have more of the, uh, the supports here, where we have the area model, a partial products area model, and then do another one where we didn't have any of those uh, supports. So let's take a look at problem number three. Let's read that first. So we're going to express 54 times 67 as two partial products using the distributive property and then solve. So what they're talking about here with the distributive property is the way that we can do partial products um, to multiply each part of 54 with 67. So first of all, let's take a look at our, um, our area model and decide how we would represent our area model. Let's see, we could look at 54 and we could break that down into two pieces, right? We could say that that's 50 and plus 4, and then across the top we could say that that's 67 across the whole top. So if we thought about it that way, we could say, well, we could think of 54 times 67 as being two pieces, 4 times 67, so we'll put that here, 4 times 67. And then we can think of the other piece, right? This area, which is 50 times 67. So we could think of that here, 50 times 67. And that's using the distributive property, because we've basically broken down a two-digit number, 54, into its pieces, 4 and 50, and taken each of those pieces and multiplied them by 67, and then added them up. And that's basically partial products. If we think of it that way, Let's go over to the right-hand side, and we'll look at our, how the partial products would work out. We would end up with, here we would have 4 times 67, and here we would have 50 times 67. And once we figured out what those two, two things were, we would be able to add our partial products together to get our, uh, our product. So let's take a look. Uh, for this problem, I think I want to do those two partial products uh, separately. So let me just do those over here. So 67 times 4. Let's see. I think I can do that. That's, let's see, that would be 4 times 7 ones, that would be 28 ones, so 8 and 2 tens. And then I would multiply 4 times 6 tens, that would be 24 tens, plus 2 more, would be 26 tens, so 26 tens. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in here, that's 268, one of our partial products. And then let's go ahead and do our other partial product, which is 50 times 67, so that's 67 times 50. So we can think of this any number of ways, uh, but let's see, for, for my purposes, I'm just going to think of this as 50 times 7, let's see, so that's 5 tens times 7 ones, so that would be 35, but it's 35 tens, or 350. Okay, and then let's take a look at the other one. Uh, here we would have, if we multiply the next part, we would say 5 tens times 6 tens. Well, 5 times 6 is 30, and then 10 times 10 is 100, so that would be 30 hundreds. 30 hundreds, let's see, and there's hundreds, and 30 hundreds. Okay, so I can add those together, and I get 0, 5, 3, 3. Okay, so I think I have 3,350 for my other partial product. Once I've got that, I think I can add my two partial products together. So I'll be adding the 1s, so 8 plus 0 is 8. Then I'm going to add the 10s. 6 plus 5 is 11, so I'll put the 1 up there. Next would be uh, 200 plus 300 plus that extra 100, that would be 600. And then finally, 3,000. And that ends up being our answer, 3,618. And that's how we use the area model to show us that we can use the distributive property to express those this way. And we, once we've expressed those this way, we can see that really these are just the same kind of partial products that we would have done when we did two-digit multiplication times one digit, uh, or when we did other, uh, other forms that had two different partial products. So uh, I hope this has been helpful. Let's take a look at a problem with a little less uh, information provided and a little less uh, instructional support. And that's the last problem in the problem set, and that's problem number nine. If we take a look at problem number nine, we're just asked to multiply... 68 times 79, and this time we're not giving an er given an area model, and we're not really working with partial products. So I'm going to switch to black here and say that we have 79 times 68. Now if we have this multiplication problem, we can just do this really in, uh, in two steps. We can do the two steps right here and not uh, go separately and do separate little squiggly uh, uh, equations.
equations and multiplication problems on the side. Let's just try to do it right here, uh, right here where we're working on it, okay? So uh, first, first up, we're going to multiply 8. We're going to multiply 8 times 9 ones. 8 times 9 ones, let's see, that would be 72 ones. So the 2 goes here and the 7 goes up there. We draw that 7 over here. Then we multiply 8 times 7 tens. 8 times 7 tens would be 56 tens, plus 7 more would be 63 tens, 63 tens, excellent, all right, and our next partial product would be, uh, our, would be multiplying the 6 tens times 9, so let's see how that would go, 6 tens times 9 ones would be 54, 54 tens, or 540, let's see, so Let's see, 540, 54, and we have five more in there somewhere. Sorry, my pen's not fantastic. Um, and then next we need to multiply six times seven, six tens times seven tens. Let's see, that would be 42 tens, 42 tens, plus the 42 tens, plus the seven, plus the five more that we had. It'd be 47 tens, 47 tens. Oh, sorry, sorry, not 47 tens, 47 hundreds, right? We had 6 tens times 7 tens, that'd be 42 hundreds, um, and we had 5 more, so that'd be 47 hundreds. So, let's see, 47 hundreds. Let's see if we can add those two together. 2 plus 0 is 2, 3 plus 4 is 7, 6 plus 7 is 13, and 1 plus 4 is 5. And so I think that we've got 5,372. So the challenges of doing this problem this way, all in all in really just a couple of steps and without doing these extra little problems on the side, are that we have to keep track of all the carrying that we have to do. Every time we generate uh, more than one digit for our place value, we have to kick it over to the next side. And because we're doing that a couple of different times in this pretty tight space, it can be easy to lose track of our 710s here uh, or our 500s here. So that's a bit of a challenge. Um, but... Once we've mastered that challenge, then we really basically know how to do uh, to do two-digit multiplication, which is the end point of this entire Module 3. We've done a lot of division, now we've done a lot of multiplication, and I hope you've all found it very illuminating. Uh, welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems, and I will see you the next time. Take care.